My name's Claire Leddingham and I'm a member of the congregation at Liverpool Parish Church, St Nick's. In my day job, I'm a dentist, a specialist paediatric dentist working for the Community Dental Service in Liverpool, where we see a wide range of child patients who are not able to access the dental care that they need from general dental practice, high street dentists due to them having additional needs of various kinds. These may be behavioural needs, extreme anxiety, or very poor cooperation due to them being of a very young age, or more specific behavioural challenges, such as autistic spectrum disorders, or learning disabilities, or just extremely high levels of tooth decay, which often, sadly, come along with unrelenting toothache, which then require extractions under general anaesthetic. I belong to an organisation called the British Society of Paediatric Dentistry, whose aim is simply to improve the oral health of children. And later this year, we were very much looking forward to hosting our annual scientific conference in Liverpool and to showcasing our wonderful city to both national and international colleagues. Unfortunately, this has had to be postponed, but hopefully we'll be able to welcome our colleagues next year at some point. Sadly, in 2020, what is a largely preventable disease, tooth decay, is still a significant health problem in children and like many other diseases including as we now know COVID-19 particularly affects those who are already socially disadvantaged in our society. And again as with a plethora of non-COVID related diseases there are unfortunately many children now who will have been unable to access the care that they need during this period and who will be suffering needlessly from toothache and dental abscesses because we've not been able to provide the necessary treatment which they've needed. I've been working largely from home during this time which I'm sure you'll agree is a very strange concept for a dentist and I'm rather ashamed to say that although I'm an NHS employee I haven't been working at the front line, as some of my colleagues have, but rather sitting in the comfort of my own home, looking out at a beautiful garden and attending endless Zoom and Skype meetings and reading and writing numerous policies, initially for the provision of urgent and emergency dental care, but more recently for a safe return to normal dental practice. A safe return to normal practice, normal life. It's what we're all crying out for right now, isn't it? My patients who need their dental problems addressing, their toothache relieving, but they also need their schools to reopen and their education, which they've surely got a right to, resuming. Other patients who need access to medical care for other illnesses, or people who need to return to work, or to rescue, or reopen their businesses. We're all yearning for a return to normal practice and normal life. And hopefully we're getting there, albeit slowly and with huge adjustments to our practice. On a purely selfish level, the one thing I'm yearning for most is once again to be able to share food and drink with friends and have social interaction and fellowship in real life. Not in front of a computer screen. I'm sure we've all tried those Zoom socials and quizzes and drink sessions, but they're really not quite the real thing, are they? So whether that's a quick coffee and a catch up with colleagues at work in the clinic or brunch in a local favourite cafe 
or shared meals with friends around the kitchen table at home. These are the things that I'm yearning to return to. But in particular, that most important shared meal of all, the bread and wine of the Eucharist, our Lord's body and blood. Last week, on the Thursday after Trinity Sunday, the church kept the feast of Corpus Christi, the body of Christ, or as the Book of Common Prayer puts it, thanksgiving for the institution of Holy Communion. We give thanks that our Lord instituted and in his Holy Gospel commanded us to continue this perpetual memorial of his death and passion when we share in receiving the bread and wine, his most blessed body and blood, the most holy sacrament of the altar. And I'm sure I'm not alone in looking forward longingly to the day when we can all be present once again together at the altar to receive him in bread and wine, in communion with him and with each other. For we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread.